Evil dolls, deadly toys, killer puppets. Welcome back everyone. Halloween is just around the corner and today I'm counting down one of my favorite subgenres of horror films, the evil plaything. You know the type. Proving size doesn't matter in the most sinister way, these flicks usually involve an innocent looking object coming to life and, uh, okay strike that. They usually involve an inanimate object coming to life and terrifying a bunch of people. Well, if that's your jam, turn off the lights and sit back. Here's my top 10 horror movies with killer playthings. Let's kick off the list with Trilogy of Terror. This 1975 made-for-TV anthology horror film features three short stories, all led by actress Karen Black, who plays different roles in each one. While that is interesting in and of itself, and Karen Black does really carry the film with her performance, that's unfortunately all the first two stories really have going for it. You could argue that this is simply a product of the times, along with being confined to television. However, where Trilogy of Terror tends to get most of its reputation is with the third and final story titled Amelia. It's easily the most iconic and well-known story of the bunch. It's about a woman named Amelia who lives alone. She brings home a wooden fetish doll containing a scroll. The scroll claims the doll contains an evil spirit and the gold chain around it keeps the spirit trapped. But when the chain falls off, all hell breaks loose and the doll goes on a rampage trying to kill Amelia. It's an absolute hoot watching this vicious doll chase Karen Black all throughout her apartment. My favorite moment is when she tries to trap it inside a suitcase. <laughs> Although Trilogy of Terror might be a little dull by today's standards, it's definitely worth checking out, if for no other reason than to watch Amelia. <laughs> Number 9, Dolly Dearest. If Chucky is the my buddy of these movies, then Dolly Dearest would be a rejected kid's sister. While clearly a clone of Child's Play, it does deviate a bit. It's about a family that moves to Mexico after father and husband Elliot Wade takes ownership of a doll factory. Not far from the factory, an archaeologist breaks into an ancient tomb, accidentally releasing an evil spirit, and, as you can probably guess, the evil spirit possesses one of the dolls. It's a little bit of a slow build, but the acting is pretty good with a recognizable cast including Denise Crosby, Rip Torn, and even this kid that I swear I've seen somewhere. Where was it? Well, how would we do it? Okay, yeah. First we need a code. So whenever we talk about it, we'll say, um... How about those Mets? How about those Mets? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Cool. So, um, back to the grind, huh? Yeah, let's go. While the effects in general aren't the greatest due to a low budget, they do hold some merits, especially in the second half of the film, including some laugh-out-loud moments like this one. and quite possibly the best eye roll ever. Separating itself from Child's Play is also a scene involving a team of evil dollies attacking Elliot, which is pretty awesome. But if you're looking for a high body count, this is definitely not the movie. In fact, I think I only counted two deaths from Dolly. Either way, if you're a fan of the Child's Play movies, it's worth checking this one out. Play with this, bitch. <sighs> At number 8 is Demonic Toys. Made by Full Moon, a company famous for making direct-to-video low-budget horror films, Demonic Toys is among my favorites. The premise goes something like this. A police woman and her undercover partner are trying to take down a couple of gun runners. When her partner is killed, she chases them into a toy warehouse. The wounded criminal's blood summons a demonic spirit which then takes control of a bunch of toys. Sound familiar? The plot is actually a little more complicated than that, and I mean that in the best possible way, but you get the idea. While this is a low-budget horror flick, and some of the effects do suffer from that, the evil toys are absolutely a riot. It's fun to see such a variety, all spoofing toys we're familiar with. The grizzly teddy, the creepy jack-in-the-box, the robot, 
and of course baby oopsie daisy with the potty mouth hi you fat fuck i'm baby oopsie daisy you lord ass will you be my special friend what the hell i can walk i can talk i can even shit my pants huh? can you shit your pants there's definitely no shortage of comedic moments as you'd expect and the cast fits right in there later on full moon went on to create a few sequels to demonic toys but the original is by far the best check it out hey you're fucking up my makeup <laughs> Number 7, Tales from the Hood. It always seems like a cop-out to put an anthology movie on the list, but I'd be doing a serious disservice if I didn't mention this fun flick. Tales from the Hood includes four short stories and a connecting story. The third story of the film, titled KKK Comeuppance, is about a very racist southern senator. This guy is about as racist as they get, including once being a member of the KKK and even setting up his office on an old plantation owned by his ancestor, who, by the way, massacred all of his slaves after hearing they'd be freed after the Civil War. Ultimately, he gets his comeuppance from none other than a bunch of dolls containing the spirits of murdered slaves. It's a fun story that does a good job of really making you hate this guy and in turn root for the dolls to exact revenge. A typical Just Desserts kind of story. The effects are awesome, and it's super fun to watch these animated dolls overpower this evil man. If you like anthology movies at all, this one should definitely be on your watch list. All of the stories are good, and you'll enjoy yourself. Coming in at number 6 is Puppet Master. This is the movie that put Full Moon on the map, and it's understandable why it was such a hit. It's simply a bizarre story with really cool effects and even cooler characters. And by characters, I mean the puppets, of course. The basic story follows a group of psychics that meet up at an old hotel after having upsetting visions. They believe that an old colleague of theirs that's been staying at the hotel has discovered the secrets an old puppet master used to give life to his puppets. However, it isn't long after their arrival that they realize something more sinister is afoot as they are hunted down by five killer puppets, each with their own deadly talents. It's a very strange plot that only gets stranger as the film progresses. Combined with the unique puppets, it's a memorable film to say the least. Speaking of the puppets, they are the real stars here. They are so freaking cool looking and unlike anything else in these types of movies. The effects are actually pretty damn good considering the budget. The stop motion is always a treat and something I find charming. If you're in the mood for something bizarre and different, check this one out. Puppet Master definitely stands out on its own and even if it's not a favorite, I promise it'll be a film you won't forget. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> You knew this one was coming. Number 5, Child's Play. This is probably the most obvious pick for this list. Who could forget the iconic Chucky, the good guy doll possessed by the soul of serial killer Charles Lee Ray. While Child's Play wasn't the first movie to feature a killer doll, it was definitely one of the first to do it effectively well so much that it eventually transformed Chucky into a popular slasher villain up there in the ranks of Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers. It's unsurprising as the film includes some amazing effects that still hold up to this day, along with one memorable voice by Brad Dorif and a stellar cast. And I do mean stellar cast. Alex Vincent and Katherine Hicks are amazing. Even now, more than 30 years later, when I watch this movie, I truly believe Andy, and I can feel the fear emanating from Karen as she discovers the doll is moving without batteries. Hi, I'm Chucky, wanna play? Child's Play is the obvious pick here, and rightfully so. Hi, what do you think? How do you top Child's Play? Well, Child's Play, of course. Taking number 4 on this list is the 2019 remake slash reboot. This is quite the anomaly as it's one of those very rare occasions where a remake is done right and in this case so well that it improves upon the original. 
While they both carry the same name, their stories are different enough that I'd almost consider it a different film altogether. Child's Play takes the general premise of the 1988 original film, updates the story for today, and then puts its own spin on it. Instead of a serial killer spirit possessing a doll with some voodoo magic, the sinister plot here revolves entirely around technology. When a worker is fired from the Buddy doll factory, he retaliates by disabling all of the safety protocols programmed into one of the high-tech dolls. It's a clever premise, especially for today. What's great about this story is that due to its nature, it creates a believable reason for a slow build, and that slow build is extremely fun to watch. In fact, for the better first half of the film, it's easy to forget what lies ahead because Chucky is actually very likable. You're kind of rooting for him. There's also many comedic moments, and it's a blast watching this doll evolve. Perfect! Okay, yes, just like that. Okay, try this one. Smile as wide as you can. Wider. Yes! Yeah, uh, it's actually pretty damn creepy. Okay, you can stop now. But how do you top or even match the memorable voice of Brad Dourif? Well, this remake's answer to that is to get none other than the legendary Mark Hamill. And man, does he deliver. Don't you see? She's not your friend. You don't need other friends. They try to keep us apart, try to ruin our fun. But I won't let that happen. It will be all over soon. Don't worry, Andy. You're gonna thank me when she's gone. When they're all gone. And on that note, the entire cast is outstanding. Aubrey Plaza, Brian Henry, and Gabrielle Bateman are all fantastic and believable in their roles. It's so nice to have all of these kids act and talk like real kids their age. It also makes sense that the audience for these high-tech dolls would be 12 and 13 year olds rather than the 6 year old boys like the Andy of the 1988 film. Of course that's also a testament to the writing of the script. All in all, it's an entertaining take on the original film and one hell of a fun time. Karen! Taking the number 3 spot is Puppet Master 2. After the success of Puppet Master, Full Moon wasted no time in making a sequel. In fact, Full Moon has made an overwhelming 10 sequels and are still making them today, albeit the better half of these sequels do suffer from their low budget nature. However, back in the early to mid 90s, Full Moon was partnered with both Paramount Pictures and Pioneer Home Entertainment, both of which provided Full Moon with a modest budget for their direct to video features. It's during these years that I consider Full Moon to be at the height of their game, and Puppet Master 2 is a prime example. It takes everything that made the original great and ramps it all up. We get much more screen time with the puppets, more cool effects, a higher body count, and even a new puppet that has a flamethrower. The story goes like this. In a cemetery not far from the Bodega Bay Hotel, the puppets use the last of the formula that gives them life to resurrect their old creator and puppet master, Andre Toulon. A few months later, a group of paranormal investigators arrive at the old Bodega Bay Hotel to investigate the events of the first film. As such, it isn't long before the investigators are introduced to our fun little 12-inch killers. But this time, their motives are a bit different. I won't spoil the entire story, but there are some fun twists and turns, including an ending that is surprisingly eerie. Puppet Master 2 definitely stands out with several memorable scenes and is easily one of Full Moon's crowning achievements. If you like the original, you'll have a blast with this one. Can't you get up? Come on, do something now! Come on!
Making second place is dead silence. If ventriloquist dummies weren't creepy enough, add in a spooky ghost story, put James Wan in the director's chair, and this is what you get. <laughs> Written by both James Wan and Lee Whannell, it's no surprise that Dead Silence delivers on the thrills and chills, considering these are the same guys that brought us the Saw films and later on the Insidious films. In fact, James Wan went on to direct The Conjuring films as well, and it makes sense. He's great at telling ghost stories, and that's exactly what Dead Silence is. The story begins with a guy named Jamie and his wife Lisa receiving a mysterious package containing a ventriloquist dummy. After picking up some takeout, Jamie returns home to discover his wife has been brutally murdered. Seeking answers, Jamie returns to his hometown and discovers a legendary folktale about a ventriloquist named Mary Shaw who was murdered in the 1940s. As he uncovers more of the mystery, he learns that his life is also in danger. What I really like about Dead Silence is that it's more than just a basic horror film. Not only is it a fun old-fashioned ghost story, but it's also a mystery, and I thoroughly enjoy that aspect. Similar to films like The Ring or The Others, it's fun to share our characters' journey as they discover answers while getting plenty of scares along the way. One of my absolute favorite things about this movie is the fun gimmick it makes use of. During every scene when something spooky is about to happen, every sound in the environment goes quiet, like hitting the mute button. It's a great reason for cutting the soundtrack and fits appropriately with the theme and story. The cast is pretty good and Donnie Wahlberg is great for comedic relief. You know, I noticed you have very smooth skin. What's your secret? Hmm. Well, that never works for me. The last act is a bit of a roller coaster and it wouldn't be a James Wan and Lee Whannell film without a twist at the end. If that sounds like your brand of vodka, then check out Dead Silence. You'll have fun. And my number one pick goes to... Dolls. Now, I've mentioned Full Moon several times already with the film's demonic toys and Puppet Master, but before Charles Band created Full Moon Productions, he owned a company known as Empire Pictures, which put out a bunch of, you guessed it, low-budget horror and fantasy films. These included titles like Ghoulies, From Beyond, Reanimator, and my personal favorite, Dolls. The premise for Dolls goes something like this. During a nasty storm, a stranded family seeks shelter in the mansion of a toy maker and his wife. Shortly after, they're joined by a man named Ralph and two hitchhikers who also seek shelter there. It isn't long before things start to get strangely eerie as it's discovered that the toys and dolls are actually alive and quite deadly. It's a very imaginative plot with elements of horror and fantasy, and there's the classic Just Desserts theme throughout the film that I always enjoy. And not just that, there are a ton of dolls in this film. I mean a ton. Nearly every scene has an abundance of dolls in it, which only adds to the creep factor. It's fun to see how this film probably influenced Puppet Master, which was released just two years later. The effects in dolls are absolutely amazing, and there's definitely no shortage, from the creepy bloodshot eyes to the ever-charming stop-motion animation of David Allen. If you don't know who David Allen is, just Google him. He's done stop motion effects for a ton of movies, such as Batteries Not Included, Willow, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, just to name a few. The cast is all pretty good. You like the characters you're supposed to like, and you hate the ones you're supposed to hate. But the real stars are Guy Rolf and Hilary Mason, who play the Hartwicks. They are perfect and really shine in every scene they're in. 
Needless to say, Dolls is a must-watch for any fan of these types of movies. It's a unique movie that often gets missed under the radar. But don't take my word for it, see it for yourself. Well, there it is. That's my top 10 movies with killer playthings. But what are your favorites? Post a comment below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.